Good evening, everybody. This is Gigi here. Wanted to give you a uh, an update. Things are really moving forward quickly in this war. Uh, so it looks like it looks like we have this ground invasion in Gaza is finally taking place. And um, sorry about that. Um, did you hear that? That's my trumpet ring. That's, uh, may maybe that was meant to be just now. Did you hear that? Okay. So we're about to hear the trumpet. We're about to hear the trumpet and the shout and the Lord of Jesus Christ is coming to get his people because we are entering into a very dangerous time. It's called nuclear war. So I'm going to give you a couple updates on that. <clears throat> um, I haven't been listening to it all day or anything, but some important things I picked up quickly is um, <clears throat> the Iranian foreign minister said that we have reached the point of no return. Okay, so that's from Iran. And the point of no return was the uh, the video I did yesterday, <clears throat> um, the Rubicon. So he's saying the same thing. Um, also, Iran opened their silos, their silos doors to their long range ballistic missiles today at noon. <clears throat> their long range ballistic missiles, Iran. Okay, that's, that's not good. And they said that if Israel goes into the Gaza and, and if America helps them, uh, they're going to burn, basically burn our country with fire. <clears throat> um, also in Gaza, they turned off the internet. They cut off all the internet. Um... And they said they were going to do that a while back. Um, so it's black there right now. And also we have the, the Dwight Eisenhower carrier strike group ship is going to the Persian Gulf south of Iran. <clears throat> so everything seems to be pointing to Iran right now. And we've been waiting for these, you know, their threats have been as bad as you can get, basically, as bad as you can get, you know, threatening to burn down our country. And uh, so this is, this is what we were expecting would happen at the time of the ground invasion, which actually has begun today. Um, in fact, uh, if you remember a couple days ago, I mentioned that Netanyahu had said they had, they had planned it, but they weren't going to tell anyone what day it was. Well, interestingly, <clears throat> it's the, it is the 27th today. And that was the day that, uh, Chris got at global rapture watchers. He got, he God gave him the number 27. And he suspected that this is what would happen on that day. And so he's right, he's right on the money because this is exactly what's happened. And this is the day before <clears throat> this partial lunar eclipse we have coming. Joel 231, the sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood. We just had the solar eclipse before the coming of the great and awesome day of the Lord. And it shall come to pass that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Okay. So we have, <clears throat> we have the, the sun turned dark and the, and this lunar eclipse is literally tomorrow on the 28th. So you have right here, the prerequisite for the day of the Lord to start. Jacob's trouble, the seven years, the 25, 20 days, 
that if you subtract those amount of days from the Feast of Trumpets in 2030, when we believe the Messiah will return, you subtract 25, 20 days, it takes you to November 4th. I mean, everything's right on time. Everything is right on schedule. The clockwork of God manifesting what he said would happen on the earth at the time he said it would happen is perfect. And it's happening now. And that's why you must be ready for the return, the rapture of the church. You must be ready because it is literally going to happen. We are about to have a showdown with the world. In fact, I think it was yesterday, I heard the words from the Lord. He was, he said, um, the stage is set. And what happens when the stage is set? I, you know, I, when I was little, my, well, my whole life, um, I did theater. I liked theater and film and, uh, you know, I was in a lot of plays and you have to set the stage before you open the curtain. Okay, but once the stage is set, the curtain is ready to open. And once that thing opens, the show must go on. So as you all can see, those of you who have been watching, you know, the stage is set for World War III. I mean, it could go, it could literally happen any minute at this point. Nuclear triggers. Literally, could it, it, any minute it could it could have you know Israel's been threatened. If you go into Gaza, every country around them you know has threatened Iran, Iraq, Lebanon, Syria. Then Russia is going to back Iran up, and China, and you've got. I mean, they're they're surrounded, just like the Bible said they would be. So. You know, the Bible says to look up at this point. Your redemption draweth nigh. So now, as of tomorrow, we're going to we're gonna pass by this lunar eclipse. Right before Jacob's trouble should start. You know, or if you count it from the Day of Atonement, which I don't know you know, which God would do, but it takes it to November 14th. And then, of course, I mentioned yesterday that you have November 11th for this prophecy that um, World War III would start on November 11th, according to Philip Barnett, the pastor who lived in Ukraine many years ago. And he saw this many, many years ago. And Chris also saw 11-11. <clears throat> um, you know, with connected to w- the war. So I thought that was interesting, you know, but do we know it's going to be on November 11th? Well, like I said before, you know, the 11-11 thing could mean a lot of different things because it's possible this thing could definitely kick off <clears throat> um, before 11-11. The way it's going right now, there's no telling. There's just no telling. But it's interesting that it's around the corner. That's interesting. And he saw, Chris saw, uh, uh, he saw 911 before it happened. He had a dream about it. And I actually was in the towers, uh, the tower that fell of 911 two weeks before it fell. <clears throat> and God had been showing me things about. New York and this and how God felt about the world in New York at that time. And I sensed something horrendous. I didn't know what it was, but I was in the tower that fell two weeks before it happened. So I'm telling you all this because, um, you know, we need to, we need to consider the prophetic voice of God as well as the all the, everything in the Bible, because some people want to just kick the prophetic out or the dreams and visions that people get, but all the things that God's been pouring out his spirit in the last days upon your sons and daughters and your young men will dream dreams and your old men will have visions. Um, 
all this, this is happening. This is happening. I mean, there, there's hundreds of people that have had dreams about everything that's about to happen, including me, World War Three. <clears throat> um, I'm and so. This is, this is it. The show is about to go down. The curtain's about to to open. I'm telling you, it could be any minute. Jesus Christ will rescue his people from nuclear war because nuclear war is a global problem. And We know God can do miracles, all kinds of miracles, and he does miracles in our lives all the time. And and he can protect you from a million things. But like I've said for years, once the problem becomes global, then he needs to rescue everyone. That's when the rapture takes place because it's a global rescue. And so it's lining up, it's lining up to what's going on right now. And I want to also add that also, Sister Kim Fisher, her son Skyler, you, a lot of you I'm sure are familiar with her by now. Uh, his son, her son Skyler, the other day kept saying "Bo, Bo," <laughs> and the other words with it like I forget, awake or you know, awake, uh, waiting going and uh Bo, you know as you as you guys know i had to clarify what happened i was driving to uh, the ranch <clears throat> to ride a horse named Bo. there was a few other horses you know there that i rode i don't remember which one it was but i w- that's where i was going but there was a horse named Bo there and um and I was asking the Lord, I said, Lord, you know, when are you coming? And immediately in front of me, a car's license plate said, Bo knows, Bo knows. And so then I come to find out too, that Bo means come, Bo Yeshua, come, uh, Bo Yeshua, Bo, come Yeshua, come Jesus, come. The spirit and the bride say, come, the spirit and the bride say, Bo, Bo Yeshua. <clears throat> and so if Skylar's saying Bo now and he's never said it before, I, I, I think it's another sign that we're out of here any minute. Because what are the odds of him suddenly saying Bo? It's crazy. <clears throat> um and one other quick thing that you guys know many years ago, I had a vision of things that looked like the rapture, but I didn't know what it was, but it's, it's a lot of what fuels me to this day. But anyway, one of the things that I've never mentioned, because there was a lot of things, uh, or I might've mentioned it a long time ago, but it's just interesting that Kim also was reading from Psalm 113 today. And God gave me Psalm 113 back in 1994, and it was connected to everything with the rapture. So I I think, you know, I just think that it's, it's another sign that we are, you can't get much closer. We're, We're leaving so soon that it's mind blowing how many things are coming up right now. I mean, I haven't even mentioned everything. Okay. So, you know, we also have on November 1st, let's go there here. Oh, wait a minute. Okay, um, <clears throat> I'm trying to get, oh, okay, so here we are. Yeah, November 1st, 
into the second, <clears throat> 17th day of the second month, the day of Noah's flood hit. The day that we believe Adam and Eve fell from grace. So here's this the lunar eclipse right before right before the flood fulfilled <laughs> and i'm going to show you this viera <laughs> and he appeared past tense appeared and the scripture that he gave me um you know back in 94 <clears throat> was he gave me part, he gave me this. He raised up the poor out of the dust and lifts the needy out of the dunghill that he may set him with princes, even the princes of his people. That's what he gave me in 1994. Okay, so I believe that's pointing to being raised up in the rapture. So, um, anyway, so I will leave you with that and, uh, you know, come to Christ if you haven't yet, because it, we're running out of time. We're running out of time and it's a very serious, what's about to happen. Very serious, very real, <clears throat> very real People don't believe it, it's going to happen, but it will. And the only way out, well, look, you know, some people will survive a nuclear war, but they'll be in a nightmare from the day, from that moment on, because now you're going to have tribulation, the mark of the beast, <clears throat> radiation, can't buy or sell without taking the mark of the beast on your right hand or forehead. And then you go to hell if you take the mark of the beast. Or you have to endure to the end to get saved. Right now, you can get saved by grace through faith alone. By believing in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. But after the rapture, the age of grace ends. And then you're going to have to prove by your works that you love Jesus so that you can be saved. You're going to have to endure. That's who that scripture is for, enduring to the end. It's for the people left behind who are not in the age of grace anymore because it's ended. Jacob's trouble time frame goes back into the law. <clears throat> Everything changes. And you don't want to be here for that. Because they'll be hunting you down. They'll be hunting you down. And the world will be violent, violent, unrestrained violence. Because the restrainer, those who have the Holy Spirit and pray, are about to leave. And who will stop the violence then? God bless you all. Take care. I'll see you soon. Here, there, or in the air.